Welcome to the Big Picture, slightly late edition. I'm your host, Larry Raglan, and at some point tonight, my co-host will be in here as well. So, we're going to get right into it tonight. It is going to be a lot of breaking news. Right at the time of going on the air right now, P. Diddy's house is being raided. What's going on with that? Donald Trump had some big news happen today. There's AI news, alien news, and World War III is upon us. Let's go with this thing tonight. Big Picture Live. Let's blow it up. Here we go. All right, here we go. Let's come on in here tonight, uh, and I'm going to start the show tonight. And uh, as you know, uh, if you were watching last week, Sandy has had full knee replacement, and she has had a rough recovery. She's doing much, much better, uh, but it is difficult at times. So she's here. She's getting ready, coming in. And I told her, it's all right. The Big Picture family will wait on you. Uh, and whenever you can get in, they'll be happy to see you. So put your seat belts on. I see what you're saying, Tracy. You got that right. Put your seat belts on. So I'm going to go right into covering the news tonight. And uh, and then, like I said, she'll come in. But if you haven't already smashed that like button, smash it now. If you're watching on Rumble, go ahead and hit that like button on Rumble. Uh, hit it. And, you know, on YouTube, remember, hit it one time, then leave it alone. Don't touch it again because you hit it again, you, un you unliked it. Okay, so just like it, like it, like it, smash it, smash it, smash it. And if you're new to our channel and you had not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to our channel on Rumble or on YouTube. Let's get into the news tonight. Uh, we lead tonight with it's a big win for Trump today. Now, of course, he's got all kinds of still things going on. But today was, you know, they, a lot of these uh, – <laughs> news organizations had set up outside of the courthouse live in lawn chairs, ready to cover the news that his properties were going to be seized and everything. And I don't know, man, Trump is just, there's just something about him. He's uh, he seems to be able to make it through things when nobody else gives him a chance to make it through. But in a huge win for Trump today, appeals courts lower his bond to $175 million. How many of y'all would like to be living a life where it's a win for you to only have to pay 175 million? Okay, so so that's that's the Trump world versus my world and your world. But a New York appellate court has ruled that former President Donald Trump can post a lower bond to cover his 464 million dollar civil fraud judgment. Uh, the appellate division, first department. Uh, said Trump can post a bond in the amount of 175 million to cover the judgment. Trump's attorneys had argued obtaining a bond for the full amount of $464 million was a practical impossibility. The panel of five judges also opted to delay enforcement of the $464 million judgment by 10 days. The ruling comes as Trump and his sons face a Monday deadline to pay or secure a bond or risk New York Attorney General Letitia James beginning the process of seizing the former president's prized assets. Goes on to say it is ordered that the motion is granted to the extent of staying in the enforcement. So the big news, of course, is, and the headline is, uh, you know, he's come out already and said that he has the cash to cover that. And uh, President Trump, former President Trump, is going to cover uh, this bond so that he can appeal it. Just so you'll understand what's going on here, it is not that the fine was reduced it is that they were requiring him to pay this bond in order to file a, 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 um, a, an appeal, to get to the appeal. So now he's got to appeal it. And I think part of the judgment as well is that it has the appeal, the appeal has to be done by sometime in September. So he's on uh, a straight line now to, to the appeal. Now, most of the experts that I have seen have come out and said that it's such a kangaroo court type thing that's happening that the appeals court looks pretty good uh, for him. But who knows? Because, you know, who would have ever imagined that you would be fined a half a billion dollars for basically no one was harmed. There was no victim. The banks even testified that he was a great customer, that he paid the loans back with interest. The banks made money. Uh, there was there was no victims on this. And, you know, what I found very interesting is some of the very talking heads that cannot stand Donald Trump, uh, CNN, MSNBC, and all this. I saw a clip the other day when they were covering this when the a few days ago when it looked like that some of his properties were going to be seized. 
uh, they were talking about that he was going to have a fire sale. And one of the fire sale properties that he's going to sell was Mar-a-Lago. And one of the things that's in this court case that they accused him of was overvaluing Mar-a-Lago. Uh, they said it was probably worth about $18 million, And uh, he supposedly overvalued it more to get as collateral for a loan. But this CNN reporter who was trying to bash him, you know, you know what she said? She said, the market is great. He's going to be able to get the money to pay this fine uh, because she'll, he would probably be able to get several hundred million dollars for Mar-a-Lago. And, and she goes, that's what properties are selling for all around there. So right there on air, she slipped up and admitted that it was worth more than $18 million, worth hundreds of millions of dollars, which is what, they, what he's accused of doing. Uh, which, by the way, uh, had, you know, it's just, you know, I don't care if you're a Trump supporter or not. I think most people are with the real, just Americans, whether you hate him or not, Americans would say, this ain't right. This ain't right. But it was a huge win, huge win for him. Uh, and, and, and quite frankly, I think a huge win for, you know, democracy, if you want to call it that. By the way, even though we, you do know we're not a democracy, you keep, you keep hearing for the sake of democracy, to save our democracy. We're not a democracy. We are a republic, okay? A republic is totally different than a democracy. A democracy is majority rules. A republic is the form of government that we have. Just a little side note there. Um, so now that's not only the breaking news today. The second thing that's broke right before we went on the air live tonight is crazy, y'all. We've been hearing rumors that this was coming P. Diddy, y'all know Puff Daddy, Sean Puff Daddy. I mean, he's changed his name more than Prince changed his. Uh, but they go going by the name Diddy today. Diddy, uh, his breaking news, this is from TMZ, I believe I got it from. Let's see, yeah, TMZ. It's all over the news. Uh, his homes in Los Angeles and Miami were raided uh, tonight. I'm talking about live, right before we went on the air. Um, and there was drone footage of it by federal agents, Homeland Security. You see the SHSI, that's the Homeland Security. And uh, let's see what it says here. This, this is the timeline here. started uh, back at, uh, which will be five, see, 3, 4, 52, my time, on this Pacific time on the timeline there from Los Angeles. The scene at Diddy's Los Angeles area home appears to be winding down, and a new photo obtained by TMZ shows just how bustling it was with law enforcement. You can just see. This is outside P. Diddy's house. Uh, and so there's extra footage of the cops. You see entire streets are shut down. Um, a representative from Homeland Security Investigations, earlier today, Homeland Security Investigations, HSI, New York, S executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and other local law enforcement partners. And then they say they will provide more information. So simultaneously, at Los Angeles and Miami, the raid is beginning to happen. And you see some of the, some of the people that they are identifying and naming, uh, I guess some of his fellow rappers and so forth. Now, now I think that most people know, um, let me just see, there, there's, there's Justin and King Combs. So uh, I guess that's that Justin and, and King there. Um, let's see. I, I, I just tell you how little I know about P. Diddy. I don't know. I mean, it looked just like him. I don't know if it's his brothers or his kids. Uh, so, but the bottom line is this. You see that it is, whoo, and I think, uh, you know, we're going to discuss this just a little bit and try to walk that line of what uh, <laughs> this really, really means um, uh, for, for in the big picture, if you will, no pun intended. Uh, are you ready, babe? All right, she's almost ready. Uh, huh? Just so she gets plugged in. So we're going we gonna to go ahead and when she gives me the go ahead, we're going to bring her in. Uh, you just give me the thumbs up. We're going to bring you in the big picture. Uh, and Sandy is excited to see you guys. And she has fought, y'all. There she is. There she is. She's coming in. She's coming in. There she is. <laughs> it's ready as it's going to be. She has fought and fought mm. and fought to be here. And I'm surviving I am, the rigors of PT, physical therapy. I am proud of you, babe. Thanks, babe. Because you, you have gone through the ringer today. The ringer is for sure. So if the hair is a mess, um, that's one of the reasons why. Um, yeah. So after all the screaming and the tears. You're here. Um, from physical therapy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Had women's lunch today. By the way, it was amazing. Yep. Thank you, all the ladies of SRC. Great time, great help. 
great turnout and of course great food um and um then did, did some more exercises and um ice compression on myself and i will say this it, it was the hardest fault <laughs> show for her to ever get on and by the way not only was she pushing through pain and screaming oh. and and just hitting things and all not on not being mad i'm talking about just running into things with with her body <laughs> And, and and then all of our equipment started messing up, so we just know this mm-hmm. is a big, big show tonight. Oh, yeah. But we Devil's are, on the loose. Devil's on the loose, but, but we are happy to have So, Sandy, you Glad come in hear. right on time because I'm talking about P. Diddy here. And the I'm gonna bring, life of the music mogul, I'm, bring, I'm bringing you back in here because I, I want to get your take O-M-G. on what— O-M-G. Yeah, and that means, oh, my goodness, by the way, for those that don't want to come after me. <laughs> yeah, goodness, goodness. Yeah. Um, so, all right, so what what is your feeling on P. Diddy's home in Los Angeles and— in Miami, live as we're speaking right now, many wow. of them are being taken away in cuffs. And uh, from what I understand, now I've got to verify this. The last thing I heard was that he was on a plane and landed in another country. Now I'm not verified that, but that's what I saw. Are the, you on X leaning towards he knew this was coming and got out of town, or he it, was just on a trip already? Or I what? don't know. That's all I heard was that. It just seemed very suspicious that this this many was coming. It's so sad that TMZ airs earlier in the day because they could give us the down low on well, this. Well, you know tonight, they're live. Right? If we were to go to well, their YouTube so. channel, they'd be live right now. I don't watch so what, TMZs what are your all the time, so I don't know about that. What do you feel? My feelings are, uh, wow, to know that the feds basically raided both of your, or two, I don't know how many homes he has, two of your homes at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Not, apparent, not, not just the feds, Homeland, Homeland Security. Homeland Security. Let's keep that in mind. That's not that's not the FBI. Homeland okay. Security. And, Sorry. And the reason, the reason Homeland Security is so important to say that, it is because, and I'm going to walk that line here. Yeah. It is because the accusations mm-hmm. are trafficking. And that's all I'm right. going to say is that word trafficking. And and when you <clears throat> put that word in there, and we've heard those rumors, most yeah. people that watch our channel probably know what we're talking about with us having to get, say it and, and get in trouble with, with the YouTube mm-hmm. world out there. That's what this is supposedly about. But Pamela here's, says, did he knew it was coming? Yeah, I think so. So what were you about to say? Now, now all I'm going to say is I'm just going to quote... Candace Owens. All right. So I want to encourage you to go to X, go to Candace Owens, Owens X account. Thank you, Pat Carr, by the way. And and you will and you will see. Thank you. That was awesome. Uh, you will see her make this statement. Mm-hmm. And this is what she said. She said, uh, well, let me just go ahead. And, I don't want while to say you're going it. I'm going, there, I, yeah, you go there. I, while you're I, going there, I want to just say read it this. so y'all can know. Um. I don't I hate to call attention to the I don't know 2 months or so ago Cat Williams interview that yeah. many of you have seen. I don't suggest you watching it. It's a No, I suggest you watching you it, but suggest just to but, watch it. but just know you're going to hear a lot of F words. I mean, there's le- not just language, yeah. but there are thoughts and ideas you may not want to be <laughs> embracing um or, you know, you know, letting that into your mind, but did he not say this was coming? He sure did. Did he not he say, sure did Cat Williams yep. not say this was coming? He sure did. Just uh, saying. Just saying. Now, let's go back. Candace Owens was just recently <clears throat> released from her contract right. with the Daily Wire and well, all of this. She must be ecstatic with that timing. Well, right? well, well look, look at here. She <laughs> says, the rumors are true. I am finally free. Yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Right, now, but watch what she says yeah. at the breaking news here. And I'm just going to read this. Listen to me, algorithm. Listen mm-hmm. to me, Ooh, algorithm. You're going to talk straight all to the, the algorithm. All the algorithm little Gs out NSA. there. NSA. 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 All you. Can you hear you. us? Can you hear us? <laughs> Just know that I am simply reading the words of another human being. I did not say this. Mm. So Candace Owens says, the feds are currently raiding Diddy's house. They already knew what he was up to, but he is going to be the fall guy so that they can protect the people at the top of the ring. Mm -hmm. They are raiding his home to hide evidence, not to find it. That's how it works. Now, there's no telling. We may not make the rest of this show just for saying that. Oh, my goodness. But I think we understand what she said. I think we all understand without going further into what she said. I think we all understand what she was saying. That there are 
We don't need to comment on it. Movers and shakers a lot more powerful or supposedly more important than him that must be protected. Is that what you're trying to say? I didn't say that. You didn't say that? Okay. I didn't say that. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what you're talking about. But, you know, hey. It's anything's possible. Let's just say that anything's possible. Okay. So, so this was not going. This was not on our radar. We had to throw this in at the no, last minute. No, this was at the last minute. This was at the last minute. Yeah, y'all. I got this on my phone. I shot it over to you. Yep. And then you're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna get into this for a minute. And then the next thing I know, we're gonna be talking about this tonight. So, so be, probably if if this thing blows up and gets even bigger and, and more, is, it'll be because of you. It, it'll be because we broke it right here. <laughs> Breaking right. news of the big picture. The big picture. No, no. <laughs> And you think TMZ would give me credit? Mm. Local pastor in Birmingham, Alabama, has cutting-edge commentary on P. Diddy. Harvey Levin. I'm a lawyer. But uh, you're gonna need one too, buddy. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> but let's let's go back to this. Um, you know, so so it, it broke. And I, let me just say this: if something else breaks that is very very uh, needed for you to know, then I'll probably do another show. Uh, separate show just to tell you because I because here's the thing this is a huge issue and we talk yes, about the border we're going to talk a lot about the border tonight like we always do and one of the things that is big when you talk about the border is that it is very widely known that trafficking is happening yeah and without saying the word that starts with with the letter S and 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 then the uh, the letter C is involved in there as well you can f- figure that out and when you put them together it is sickening it yeah. is sickening what is happening. In the multi-billion dollar business, do you, do you know that it is common knowledge that the running of drugs across the border used to be by far the number one prof- profitable thing? Now it's not. It's been overtaken by trafficking. And and so so now we're talking about, you know, the rumors are, and look, there's a lot of people, Sandy, without us, we don't spend a, whole, a lot more time on this, but there's a lot of people that have been connected to Diddy and his parties that are some very, very sure. well-known people. Watch this. Watch this. In entertainment, in government, and it breaks my heart in the church and in in, yeah. in, in the Christian world uh, because well, P. Diddy claimed to be a Christian. Well, that's been said, that's accused, just, These are all whatever. accusations. These are all alleged. And I don't even like talking about that aspect of it. And, no, you know, either. thank God it's not up to me to yeah. decide to raid homes, arrest people, and send this through the court system. Uh I don't want to be anywhere near it, quite frankly. Me neither. But I'm glad that here's there again. We live in a world where the world is a stage. A stage is a world of entertainment. Mm. And, uh, you know, this is happening. And I would love to have all the confidence in the world that this is going to be a fruitful and um, methodical and absolutely thorough investigation yeah. to right. get to a conclusion. But we don't know if it's anything more than, you know, deciding to make one person a fall guy or that's, this is even happening right now because here's a great tactic. Look over here. Watch what's going on over here so yeah. you don't notice what's going on over here. Yeah, and, and, and it's sad that we, we default to that now. Yes. It's like we 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 want to cover the news, but in the back of my right. mind, we're like, is this really even something that really happened? Or Here's what is thing. it really hiding? You say it's sad we default to that, and it's sad that we have to default to that. But it's good that we're finally wising up and yeah. waking up to yeah. some of the tactics. And I'm not saying this Right now is absolutely that, but it could be. It could be. Yep, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Well, let's let's get into you know t- today's tonight's topic is you know they want World War Three, and and that's the truth. They really do. The powers that be want. And look, there's there's a lot going on around the world. One of the biggest things that's going around the world right now is what's happening in Israel. Yes. And something happened today saying this never happened in the history of the United Nations in the history of the world. This is big. This is big, and it's actually sickening. But I'm going to show you what happened today. The United Nations Security Council Council demanded a ceasefire in Gaza. Now, this is not the first time that's ever happened. In fact, it's happened multiple times. I don't even know how many times since the history of Israel. But the United States today abstained from the vote. They are a part of the permanent members of the Security Council, allowing the first ever ceasefire resolution to actually pass the United Nations for Israel, ever. Because every single time it has ever come up, no matter if it's a Democrat or Republican, the United States has always vetoed it. 
but they abstained. And I'm going to tell you, that's cowardly. If you don't want to go for it, if you're against it, I mean, if you're for it, then vote for it. But they just didn't want, the Biden administration just did not want them as a yes vote. So, and they certainly didn't want to be as a, as a blocking no vote. So they abstained from it. My, my, my. The United Nations Security Council has unanimously passed a resolution. That means everybody that's on the Security Council. Calling for an immediate ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. Specifically timed to coincide with the holy month of Ramadan. The landmark decision also includes demand for prompt and unconditional release of all hostages taken during the October 7th attack against Israel. The resolution advocates for a ceasefire throughout Ramadan, with all parties continuing a lasting ceasefire afterward. That's code for it's time to end this war, telling Israel it's time to end this war. This nuanced language emerged from the U.S. officials' insistence on avoiding the phrase permanent ceasefire. So they didn't want permanent ceasefire, so they changed it to lasting ceasefire. Mm. That is a cowardly move on behalf of my nation. And I want to remind you, I am a preacher of the gospel. This is not a preaching show tonight. This is a news show, but I can't apologize for who I am. And this is what I know that the Word of God says. He says to the nation of Israel, he says to Abraham, I will bless them that bless you, yes. and I will curse them that curse you. Yes. Those that are for you, I will be for. Those that are against you, I will be against. And there is a reason why the United States is not in prophecy. This was prophesied. This had to happen, but it's, it's still sad it that our nation could have stopped this. They tried to get Netanyahu to, to agree to it. He said, no, we're going to finish the job. Uh, what's the guy's name? I'm having a brain freeze. The senator that called for a new election. What's the guy's name from New York? Schumer. Schumer call, called for a new election to overturn to basically a coup, whatever you can call. Get rid of Netanyahu. He won't listen to us. He won't take our calls. So they just said, you know what we'll then we'll do? We'll go to the biggest group in the world, the United Nations, demonic group of nations that hate mm-hmm. Israel's uh, existence. And, and for the first time ever, we'll abstain, and we want to make sure that there is language in there without us actually saying uh, permanent ceasefire or the end of the war. We want to also allude to that, and then we'll abstain from it and let it go forward. Mm. Well, by the way, I don't think that's going to stop Netanyahu, but I'm going to tell you, if, if, if you're Netanyahu and do, you already doubted if America was behind you, there is no doubt anymore. America is not behind him. That hurts me to hear you say that. I mean, we know it, but man, to hear those words out loud. Ouch. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's the first time this has ever happened. Yeah. It's like they are trying to do as much as they can yeah. because they know their opportunity to get their stuff done is running out. I'm telling you, I thought I think they thought they had eight years, and then then Kamala was going to have another eight years after that, and they were going to finish off this nation. They were going to finish off Agenda 2030, and the World Economic Forum had their people in place. Everybody's in place in Canada. They're in place in France. They're in place. They're in place in Cuba. They're in place. Everybody, everybody had their man in place. But I'm telling you, they're they're scared right now, Sandy. I believe they're scared. I believe we, they're they're a, they're a scared dog backed up in the corner, and they are just trying to just burn the whole house down. I'm mad. Yeah. I'm mad because I listen. I don't condone everything Israel's ever done. I know as a nation they've done some things that that are not of God. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about it. So is America. So is every country in the world. Every country in the world has things that they've done that are hideous and terrible. But there is a reason why the whole world wants that little spot of land. Because that is the land, the holy land. And we have to support it. I think you're right to be mad. But I think it's also a time to, uh, if you're not already concerned, to be concerned. Absolutely. This is very serious. Very serious. Very, very serious. You doing all right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know what you're thinking. What? <laughs> I know what they're thinking. What are they thinking? That you're that you have not had a pain pill. <laughs> that you're on something. I did not take a pain pill. Yes. Hey, you mm. listen, y'all. She's gone through a lot. For her to be on this show, y'all don't even understand 
<laughs> Y'all don't even uh, study. If I could have had a hidden camera in this studio right before we went on the air, all the <laughs> stuff that went on, Y'all, I'm telling you, it would have been it would have been YouTube gold. They would have sworn we were making a comedy. Yeah, it would have been YouTube gold. I had cameras falling over. I had one camera fall over, thought it broke. I had lights <laughs> falling over. You know, I, I mean, Lord have mercy. Me screaming and grunting, trying to. <laughs> Sandy was like, get on, boy. We got a show to do. Like, it's not easy to maneuver in this small space when you have two legs that are working. CJ said, maybe you need a pain pill, Sandy. No. No, she doesn't, <laughs> CJ. Actually. Well, we rebuke you, CJ. We know. We love you, CJ. You're not trying to help in my recovery. All right. So, so, but now let's get serious again because a lot of horrible things have been going on. And what a week we just had. What a week. And my goodness, that what happened in Moscow. I mean, you believe what you want to believe, who's behind it, and all that. Kind of, it's still it's still human lives, and it's still yes. it's still these are human beings. These whether are God's children, whether yeah. we love or care about them or not. These, like you said, they are lives yeah. and, that deserve to live just as anyone does. Absolutely, people with families, fathers who can't be there to provide for their wives and yes. children, yes, and, and moms and and grandparents, whoever was in that building. Yes, yes, and, and, you know. So, so while we were hearing about this we were all of a sudden now we live in a world where we, where people's videoing it and i'm not i'm going to be careful not to show you the video but it was it Please. was really rough but moscow concert attack survivors describe nightmare of fear and death it goes on to say that the four armed men walked calmly towards the metal detectors at cross uh, crocus city hall firing their automatic weapons point blank in short bursts at terrified civilians who fell screaming in a hell of bullets. Nearby, one witness uh, had just taken off her coat and was standing in line on Friday evening at the internal entrance of the 6200-seat concert hall outside Moscow, where Soviet-area rock group Picnic was about to perform, think about this, a song, their hit song, Afraid of Nothing. The shots came from behind us, they said, it was loud like a firecracker blast, fireworks, like an automatic burst. I could hear it right behind me, not far away. Uh, the video goes on to say, you know, and the article goes on to say people were screaming, everyone was running. Now, here's the thing, Sandy. I want to go back to just me and you, and mm -hmm. then I want to get your opinion on something. Okay. Um, it is being reported that they... There are four men who have been arrested. They were not killed. They have been arrested and detained. Mm -hmm. They are, ISIS has taken uh, and, credit for And this. they took credit pretty early, pretty early in this. They're called ISIS-K. And I just want to say, <laughs> I'm not laughing. I just, uh, so quickly after this took place, I can't remember who, but we were letting know someone, two different countries or individuals from countries or maybe the same country let us know, hey, this wasn't Ukraine. Right. Uh, you right. Know, no way. Don't worry. It wasn't Ukraine. Yeah. I mean, just immediately. Immediately. Just so. Because um, everybody's, they knew everybody's mind was going to go there. Right. Yeah. And so it, the way it was put out didn't seem completely sincere. So, okay. Then not long after that. ISIS came out yep, and, um, you know, took responsibility for this. But <laughs> what is your thoughts on it? Well, I know that ISIS took credit for it. Yes. And this this is the, let me just let me put, you, you asked me what my thoughts are. Let me tell you the narrative mm -hmm. that is out there everywhere yeah. today. Yeah. You you had women's lunch and you had a lot going on. So yes. you haven't really had a chance to I have to, not had time to, to look get into, into this. this today. So mm -hmm. so a lot of this you don't know yet, but here's the narrative that's coming out is that now it is being said these four men are detained. They all uh, have been from what I've been told and people I follow, you know, you can only imagine how the Russians would interrogate you. I mean, they're they're not going to follow the Geneva Convention, okay? There is supposedly oh, some not. horrible things. Who's to say that horrible things shouldn't be done to somebody like that? That's people's opinion. Some people would say that, but some really, really intense interrogation happened, and one of them supposedly admitted 
this is this is alleged that he admitted that he was hired. They were hired mm-hmm. to carry this out. Okay. That's one thing that's in the narrative. The okay. second thing that's in the narrative is that it is believed that the, all four of them were trained in Turkey and that they were trained that, that, that supposedly there are some ties to the, the um, embassy, the Ukrainian embassy in that nation. Whether any of that's true or not, you mm-hmm. know how the, the fog of war, the fog of th- things come out, and later on they just recant all of that. But that's mm-hmm. what's coming out today. But I will say this. Um, what Vladimir Putin is doing is he, right or wrong, whether he's taking advantage of it or not, he is saying that this is Ukraine. And he is saying Ukraine is he tied to He said it is Ukraine? He's, he's implying to it. He's implying to it. Well, openly. that's exactly what I was getting at. Yeah, he's, that, he's using it. Put okay. it that way. He's using okay. it. Whether he believes it's know. Ukrainian or not, he's using it. And there are people <laughs> that are reporting it. And mm-hmm. the pe- this is what's being said. Yeah. The people of Russia are being programmed and by default believe there's no way that Ukraine was not involved in it somehow. Okay. Then you okay. tie that in to the alleged, and it's big air quotes here, mm-hmm. alleged. I'm not saying this is fact. That the alleged rumor that's coming out is that one of them in interrogation said that they were hired. Now, that person supposedly did not say you by the Ukrainian army or the Ukrainian government, but that they were supposedly hired to carry this out, and then you start putting the pieces together. Well, I can tell you this. There's... There are people that are saying, you know, just like when hap- something happens in America, some other countries, there's some people who are saying that, that Putin is responsible because he's trying to do a false flag thing to cause them to do even more to Ukraine. And it, is, it has come out today that they are, the, the intelligence is saying that they are getting ready to bomb Ukraine on a level that they never have. Uh, and they're using this as motivation. What is the weapon that they're talking about? I can't remember. Particular name. So, and by the way, too, finish mm-hmm. that thought. The last count is over 143 people. Have, oh, really? Have died. Okay. It's, well, it's it was 133 there. for yeah. quite some time. I didn't know if it would rise again. Yep. So, two things that just stick out in my mind was the immediate um, whoever it was that came out and said, "Oh, you can be assured that this was yeah. not Ukraine." Yeah. That was almost immediately that yeah. came out. Well, Ukraine was one of them said that but and the other thing you said you were talking about that the line of thinking the narrative that these people were trained in turkey yeah. my goodness this place has thousands of years of brutality coming from that country it's not just a right now thing there has just i mean the ottoman empire world wars have started in, from that region, in that region. Let's let's go to this right here. I mm-hmm. just looked it up while you were talking about it because I wanted to verify what I was saying. Okay. Moscow terror attacks suspects likely received instructions in Turkey, Russian daily reports. It goes on to say that two of the four Tajiki men alleged to have participated in the deadly March 23rd terrorist attack, uh, it says, probably received instructions for the armed attack when they traveled to Turkey Russian newspaper reported on March 25th. The other two subjects accused are taking part, which took the lives of at least 137 from this report, okay. were recruited on Russian territory. Yeah. The source was also cited as saying. So so we see that, uh, you know, that is the narrative that's being put out by Russia. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether it's true or not, that is what their intelligence is telling them. It says... Um, Okay, here, here's what I was talking about here. I want to read this here. Um, it says that one of them, the one I was talking about that was interrogated, uh, said that I listened to a lesson on a social media platform. This is quoting, supposedly quoting this terrorist telegram to a preacher. Then the preacher's assistant wrote, he wrote on telegram with the last name without anything. He offered money, 500,000 Russian rubles, equivalent to around $5,500 to kill no matter who. So, so he's just saying, you know, talking about preachers. He's obviously talking about Islamic uh, preachers. Uh, and then it goes on, and I don't want to say much more because I might get in trouble there because I'm talking about alleged activities. But the rumor is, is that they were recruited 
they were paid, and supposedly this went down. At least two of them are admitting their the Russian and Russian information is that they got their training in Turkey, and then the narrative gets a little crazy because that story goes on to say they believe they received their instructions from the Ukrainian uh, facility there, embassy in Turkey. So very, very oh interesting. Oh, boy. Well, and Alicia, I saw what you said. Everybody pl- pray for Alicia. She's had a foot injury, and mm. she's at the ER. So we're, we're praying for you, Alicia. Bless your sweetheart. Wow. Watching it from, a, <laughs> with, from the ER, Alicia, you are God awesome. God bless her heart. God bless you, Alicia. Man, the devil is mad today. <laughs> the devil is, <laughs> is mad. He's just mad. But I'm going to tell you what, no matter what, our big picture family ain't going to miss. That's right. Even if they're in the ER. That's so we sweet. praying for you. And everybody else, by the way, everybody else, we pray for a big yes, picture family yes, all the time. Yes, yes. We know you got you a lot going on. You guys are praying for each other. We see this all the time yes. in chat and comments, and we appreciate you loving each yes. other. Yeah, and y'all keep praying for this one over here, too. Y'all. I know you guys are praying for me. Yep. yep. And they really put it on me today. They were mean to me. Yeah. The, 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 <laughs> they said I wasn't therapist. doing what I'm supposed to do. And the only reason I'm bringing this up again is they're like, look, you know, if you don't get to this plateau, Real, real soon, they're going to do something really serious to you, girl, to make sure you get there. And I'm like, hmm. oh, that sounds terrible. I think somebody else told you that. That's all I'm going to say. I wasn't listening to him, though, and I'm sorry now. <laughs> but anyway, so okay. I got to get to that next plateau where it's yeah. not going to be happy it's times. Be but anyway, and pray by, for Alicia. By the way, thank you. We, we, had, we don't do this enough. We don't thank our partners enough. No. And we don't thank your, the super chats and the super thanks that you guys – you know, you get inspired, something touches you, and you hit that super thanks, super chat on YouTube. That is a blessing to us. We don't do it for that reason. And we thought last time we saw several that did that, and we just said, you know, we need to take a moment and just say thank you because that means a lot to us. And to all of our partners, we got several partners out there that are helping us build our studio and so forth and going to our website and have j- clicked the join mm-hmm. button down below us, down below the screen on YouTube. Thank you so much to our partners. Yes, and I want to say hey to that cute little Monica from Norway. Oh, come on in, Watching Norway. Watching from Norway? Come on in, Norway. What? All right, let's get let's get back mm. uh, to the um, the news tonight. We're going to thanks to Ricky Scapero from In Time Headlines. He is. Uh, he is on top it of it. Hard. Now, now what's yeah. happened as a result of what happened in Moscow, countries around the world are raising their terror alerts again. France has just raised its terror alert warning to its highest level. They need to raise their alert and shut their mouth. They <laughs> keep yeah. talking too much. Yeah, that's true. Threatening stuff. <laughs> that's true. The French government is raising its terror alert warning to its highest level following the shootings in Moscow, Prime Minister said on Sunday after a meeting with senior security and defense officials with President Emmanuel Macron. Uh, it says that uh, it, the decision comes months before Paris hosts the Olympic Games and was taken in light of the Islamic State's or ISIS, claiming responsibility for the Moscow attack and the threats weighing in on the country. France's terror alert system has three levels, and the highest level is activated in the wake of an attack in France or abroad, or when that threat is one considered to be imminent. It allows for exceptional security measures. I want you to think about the wording here, such as stepped-up patrols by armed forces in public places like train stations, airports, and religious sites. Now, I understand it's good to be diligent, diligent, but here's the thing, that's also a way to take away freedoms. Yeah, it is. And, and it's, it's, it is just, they, they never let a crisis go to waste. No, you got that right. My goodness. I'm proud of you, babe. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. using that. That's great. So your comments, give me some of that water, too. <sighs> okay. All right, it's on you. It's your show. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. France is kind of hinky to me. Hinky. They're hinky. They're just what kinda, is hinky? I never heard that. They're never just used that kind of. I don't know. Hinky. I can't just. Um, it, I don't ever really feel like I understand who or what they are or what they're trying to do, and it's not. To me, I know they're an an old European country, much older than we are here. But when I think about them versus um, Britain, Great Britain, yeah, I don't think of them the same way. No, no, I, and it's probably probably something seriously wrong with me. But um, I just I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe what I'm thinking. 
But so the Olympics is going to be hosted there. Yes. Okay, I, we get it. You got to get ready for that. That's a very big yep. deal. Yep. People are coming all over the world. It means a lot of money and notoriety for you, and you don't want something bad happening on your watch, right? That's true. That's true. So, okay, but like you said, needs to be measured. Yeah. Because never let a crisis go to waste is a real thing. And every <laughs> single time an emergency is declared for any reason, when they, if they ever take it back, when they walk it back at all, they take freedoms with them. Sure. Every single time. Think about yeah. the 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 um, the Patriot Act. I mean, there are yeah. things that happen in our. We yeah. have lo- we lost so much freedom. Yeah. In the Patriot Act, sure. as a result of nine eleven, and and every time something bad happens, they seize that moment. And uh, and that's why shows like this is important. And you may want to help us and be a part. Would you like to help us build the big picture family? We're on a mission to wake up the world to what is really going on. All you have to do is go to our website at LarryRaglin.com and make a one-time gift. Or you can become a monthly partner. Any amount is a blessing and an encouragement to us. While you're there, make sure you get a copy of our book, I See Greatness in You. Browse our merchandise store. Connect with us on our social media links and join our mailing list. We appreciate it. And remember, we ain't woke, but we are certainly awake. That's yes, right. Yes, we are. Yes, we, we are. We are. So, uh, yeah, be a partner with us. We'd appreciate that <laughs> greatly. Let's get back into the news. Um, if I can find my, where's it at? Lost my part. Lost my news thing. Where's it at? Well, let me ask you a question. Are we going to be talking about uh, Kate tonight at all? Uh, well, you can go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I didn't know if we were going to do a full spread I don't, I don't on, so. on Kate. Yeah, go but ahead. You know my conspiracy mind is always working. Well, go ahead with it. So a lot of things happened on March 22nd or 322, or if you're a conspiracy theorist, Skull and Bones, 322. Um, that's when this bombing happened. Mm. That's when the new video from Kate dropped. Mm. And... You know, a lot of people with conspiracy leanings, they understand about um, Illuminati sacrifice rituals. And, Watch out. you know, it's hard to think about people being killed and, and murdered, quite frankly, in cold blood like that mm. as being a form of sacrifice. Yeah. But... That is a line of thinking, and I'm not saying, oh, yes, it's 100% true, but on that day, many people died yeah. and lost their lives. And on that day, we were offered up a line of thinking concerning Princess Kate. And quite yeah. frankly, the second this latest video started, I was like, that don't look real. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, so her face does not look like it goes with the rest of her body. The flowers aren't moving in the background. This it could be. It could it, it could be completely real. It we're could not, be we're not, we're not 100% saying it's not real. real, but I'm just saying. It did look a little strange. It did not look, the whole scene with her did not look like it went together. It did not look completely yeah. real to me. And, and there's all kinds of conspiracies about finding old videos. There's right. a, there's an older video that was from several years ago. She had the same shirt on. Oh, really? Same exact shirt. It was a video. And, and I, I'm when, sure what, you know what I thought when I thought that? I was what? like, the royal family ain't got no new clothes in, in several <laughs> years. She's still holding on to her favorite sweater. Uh, that was just strange right. to me. It was the same exact sweater. Right. And it was several years ago in a video that she had done. Mm-hmm. And uh, so there's, what a, there's a lot said, of... What was said, if you just read the words that she said, I think it would be great. I think it would be very appropriate and have a great tone to it. I think that it was um, very professional and very well, um, well thought out. Yeah. But at this, at this point, we don't know. I, okay. I don't know what to think because we had Photogate. Yeah. 
you know, the week before with the photoshopping right. debacle. Yeah. Well, it, it felt weird. like it was weird. So that felt like that forced to me in my mind. I'm thinking, okay, well, now she's being forced to come out and make an actual video explaining. Yeah. Like I said, the words that were said seemed very professionally laid out. It told the story of what was going on and that, you know, please respect our privacy. I need to deal with this right now. Yeah. Anybody would understand that, right? You're a mother with three children. You're a wife. You are a very um, high, highly placed individual. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, we think, oh, these royals, they have it made. Yeah, sure. They have a lot of privilege. A lot of people love them. But they have to get out there and work and yeah. sell this thing and go to the dinners There's, and the look, functions and speak and dress up and you know, it's not all happiness and wonderfulness. No, and there's a lot of stuff going on with the royal family. I mean, sure. I mean, Charles is still. Where is the king? Yeah, where's the king? He's like Joe Biden during the last campaign. Yeah. He just, like, you know, we didn't see Joe Biden when he yeah. was campaigning to, for president, and so here, he finally got to be king. He's and then finally all... king. We understand. It, they've yeah. been there. It's been an announced that you are very sick. Well, can anybody talk well, the, to us and tell us what's going on? The the news article I read today was that he is quote very frustrated with how long his recovery is taking. Okay, he's telling his doctors he wants to get back out. And I'm work sure he does. And all of that, but but yes, people. I see in the live chat people mm -hmm. are talking about AI and Kate. So mm -hmm. look, all of that is very possible. We have shown mm -hmm. you. We are at a place now. We don't know. I mean, know. Uh, look, we. We hope the best for Kate. Yes, we, we do. We want if if the if, if she everything, is really sick, yes, exactly. my goodness. Yes, absolutely. Let her have the very best care. Yes. And leave her alone to recuperate. But there are people, and we'll just say this and we'll go on to the news because we won't stay much longer right. here. But there are people saying there might have some something else that might be happening. That might not even be a, a real person because a real person couldn't make a video. So, so let's just let's leave it there. And let's just say the truth will probably come out. I think, but pro maybe not. Maybe the truth will never come out. But because I, I'm, we're just at the place now, we don't know if truth is ever coming out except the Word of God. Mm -hmm. The Word of God's only truth you can you can stand on. All right. Well, you know they changed out one of the Beatles at the height of the Beatles, and we never knew it. So, mm. so you so you really believe Paul McCartney's that other dude, and it's not really Paul I'm McCartney. Saying I heard that. Okay. You know right. he didn't have his shoes. Sandy, on. Sandy, focus, <laughs> focus. We have news to cover. <laughs> we're back. <clears throat> now, oh, speaking of this, I can tell you something. Tomorrow night, if you're watching this live, uh, tomorrow mm -hmm. night is a huge show. Oh, if you yes. if if you watch the Confessionals podcast, the oh my goodness, Tony Merkel is awesome. Tony Merkel is he is a man of God, y'all. But he he covers Bigfoot, Nephilims, aliens, dog man. He got it all. I mean, if it's if it's a weird monster, this dude covers it. I want to show you just a little clip. Can, can I show a little clip? Would you please? This is just a few little things. Please. This is a one hour Nobody and five Nobody go to the bathroom. Minutes. Yes, exactly. An hour <clears throat> and five minute show, and we go into all kinds of things. And at the end of the show, Tony Merkel preaches the gospel. I want y'all to see this. Just a little preview clip tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Be looking for that. And uh, in the, in the title of the show is what are the Nephilim and aliens too? People Watch know this. about the classic um, Bigfoot video from back in the 60s it's called Patterson Gimlin film. Uh, he, it, the storyline is that he is tracking the offspring of that Bigfoot and they migrated to the Colorado Rockies and there's a specific Bigfoot he's been tracking. Mm. And uh, it's about him coming to understanding what Bigfoot is and the journey going from science to, there's more to it than, than what I thought. I just did a, a recording that hasn't aired yet with a friend of mine who did a whole Lilith episode with me. Mm. And he has traced Lilith back to one of the women who willingly turned herself over to the fallen angels and willingly procreated with fallen angels. What? And yeah, yeah. So when we talk about Lilith and, and the, wow. the, 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 the demon Lilith, there's a whole thing, a whole thing that we don't have it, just in scripture alone, the information on uh, that when you start researching and digging into this stuff and who Lilith was and why, why is she still popping up today? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a real reason for that. And it, it turns out that she uh, did something that was extremely forbidden uh, and she wasn't alone. There were several women that did this. Um, and so 
from the offspring, though. So you have a willing. All right, so we're going to go back to that in just a second. What do you think so far? I mean, she's he's talking about Lilith. <laughs> I'm loving this. And I'm just Lilith gonna... is supposedly, uh, I mean, it's just some crazy stuff. But I'm inviting people over. It's going to be a watch party. Oh, it's going to be. This is a mm-hmm. show. Let's watch just a little bit more mm-hmm. and then we'll get right back in the news. Because you got to hear this one part he talks about. People know about the classic uh, that Goliath was a Nephilim. Yes. And there was not just him. He had a whole family that were yes. giants. That God sent the flood wiped out the, like the the problem like it was a problem yeah. and uh and start new knowing that it was going to happen again but uh it was going to give time to build that up and maybe like i, I don't understand science as far as genes go and stuff but maybe there was an understanding that the second wave would not be as serious as the first mm. wave as far as stature goes um, just kind of like, you know, the the whole idea of uh, copying the DNA of a human being, it, it, it's like a photocopy, it kind of gets worse and worse as it goes on. Mm, um, and so maybe that that there is something there to that. Right. He's not right. going to mess with the ones he's got. He's when I started following Jesus, it all started going on. That's why. <laughs> That's why. That's why. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> and, and, and it's, it's, it, it's not fun, but we don't live for this life. We live for the next one. Mm. Yes. Let it go. Stop worrying about today and tomorrow and worry about eternity and how are we going to leave our thumbprint on this realm now and the people around us because that's what we're commissioned to do. It's not going to be easy. Listen, Jesus was tempted. You're going to be tempted. Jesus went through the ringer. You're going to go through the ringer. You chose your side. Now stick with it. (laughs) Wow. Come on, Jesus. Uh, Hey, hey, dude, let me tell you, that is an awesome show. (laughs) And I just want, we don't usually promo shows like that on here, but I wanted y'all to know about that because that is a huge show, y'all. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Let's get back in the news. And and one of the things that's coming uh, that people are talking about in America, people are saying that America needs to prepare and other nations need to be prepared around the world for a massive terrorist attack as well. Now, we've been talking about the southern border, and listen to this. It says it happened in Israel. Yeah. Now it's happened in Moscow, and it's going to happen here in America. This is this is an opinion piece. Uh, no one's speaking. This is fact, that, but this is just the way they feel. And by the by, the way, I think most people sort of feel like something like that's going to happen in a lot of countries. The jihadist merciless war against the West. The Muslim fanatic fanatics are not so finicky as we're about our distinctions between the Jewish state, Russia, and us, and the great Satan. Did not end when the regime uh, media started covering other things. We have met, we may have fled Afghanistan, Afghanistan and Libya and largely pulled out of Iraq, but the war that is that war is still going on. It's going to go on until we decisively win it. But unfortunately, our ruling class refuses to decisively win it. Our ruling class actively undermines attempts to win it, and it refuses to prepare for what is coming. And the author of this and many people are saying. They believe that we need to be prepared in this country, in freedom-loving countries all around the world, for that same kind of attack. Because you think about it, it was not exactly like what happened in Israel with Hamas, but it was just as brutal. It was a brutal, systematic, horrible terrorist attack. And what this person is saying is that it goes on in the article of saying that many people high up in intelligence are saying that that is why the southern border, those that are coming across the southern border, one particular person says that there is seven to ten known ISIS separate groups spread out across the United States of America uh, right now that have come across the southern border. They call them cells? Cells. Or? cells. Or they call them something else, but yeah. we call them cells. Yeah. Yeah. That almost gets too much. Yeah. But it's we got to talk about it. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. It's going to make me wish I did take that pain pill. Mm. Okay. Take <laughs> care. Well, you know, we can always count on wisdom <laughs> coming from our vice president, uh, Kamala Harris. Oh, yes. Did you see the video where she's at, in Puerto Rico and she's outside and the, the people start singing? <laughs> I didn't see the video, but I. And she's clapping along, <laughs> smiling. And singing then, along. And, and sing, she? Singing along with a song, just smiling. And her aide comes up, whispers something in her ear. And all of a sudden she goes, You might not want to do that. She's like, You don't want to sing along with that. They're singing a song of protest against you. <laughs> and she didn't know it. Kamala Harris, Kamala, however, how you say it, uh, 
leaves the door open for consequences. <clears throat> Can somebody look up and see if her name means destroyer? Does Kamala actually mean destroyer? Why are you saying that? Because I think her name means destroyer. <laughs> Okay. Netanyahu appears to just be flat out ignoring President Biden's warning about an offensive in Rafa. Is that a red line for your administration? We have been clear in multiple conversations and in every way that any major military operation in Rafa would be a huge mistake. Let me tell you something. I have studied the maps. There's nowhere for those folks to go. Egypt. And we're looking at about a million and a half people in Rafa who are there because they were told to go there, most of them. And so we've been very clear that um, it would be a mistake to move into Rafa with any type of military operation. A mistake, but would there be consequences if he does move forward? Well, we're going to take it one step at a time, but we've been very clear in terms of our perspective on whether or not that should happen. Are you ruling out that there would be consequences from the United States? I am ruling out nothing. Hmm. I am ruling out nothing. So, wow. so I'm going to give Sandy a break for just a minute as she uh, adjusts some things. You Highly guys. struggling. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Highly struggling over okay. here. Okay, well, baby, we're praying. But desperately for you. trying to pull it together. You are doing amazing. <laughs> You're doing amazing. And I, and I think that everyone would understand if at any moment you need to check out tonight. Everybody would understand. So that's on you, babe. So, all right. So, uh, all right. So let me let me just go ahead and continue. Are, uh, you just tell me the thumbs up when you're ready to come back in. Uh, I think I'm ready. Okay. All right. We're we'll bringing you back in. Bring okay. you back in. All right, y'all. Here we go. All right. <laughs> she didn't scream or nothing. I was proud of her. I didn't get punched. I didn't get nothing was thrown at me. Honestly, I don't know how I was not crying, but <laughs> God is good. You're doing oh great, man. You're doing so good. So good. I think mm -hmm. everybody's pretty. And I think we're just going to do this for you. Thank you. The crowd is going wild. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. All right. So let's don't forget about China. No. China, China, Can't China, about China, them. China, China, uh, China's aircraft and warships surround Taiwan this week as threat of invasion skyrockets. We've told you this is coming. The closer we've told you and yep. told you. I started back yep. in June of last year telling you. That as we got close to the spring and summer, moving into the election year, you would hear about China making preparations it seems to take like Taiwan. They have a scale. <laughs> yeah. And they're going to do, this is my opinion, they're going to do everything that they can do. They're going to push every button. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Except actually start, they're going to do everything they can do except actually start war until it's time to actually start war. Yep. Yep. You're exactly right. All right, so so what's happening in this article is saying that multiple Chinese vessels and aircraft have been tracked moving around Taiwan in recent weeks as the threat of invasion looms. Seven Chinese naval vessels and five military aircraft were detected operating around Taiwan on Sunday. The country's Ministry of National Defense has claimed as the threat of invasion surges. Now, that is why we said the name of this show is They Want World War III. Yeah. Now, who are they? They are the elite. They are the World Economic yeah. Forum. They are the United Nations. I don't care what they're spouting out about peace. Mm -hmm. It's a bunch of baloney. They want chaos. They want world war because that is the ultimate moment to seize control. That is the ultimate moment to put every imp implementation of every part of the digital world and all the things yeah. that they want to do to track people is all coming through this. Now, Sandy, this is this is the the part that is big. Is I just wanted to show that one headline and then I wanted to show this. Taiwan confirms this week US troops are already on the frontline islands near China. Wow. Okay. So Taiwan has confirmed that there are U.S. troops stationed on its islands in the Taiwan Strait on a permanent basis, including an island just over a mile off Chinese southeast coast. The National Defense Authorization Act in 2023 paved the way for their arrival to conduct training programs for troops on Taiwan's front line. China has vowed to someday annex democratic Taiwan 
which it regards as a rogue province. Despite the fact the Chinese Communist Party government in Beijing has never ruled there, China has sharply increased military sorties and drills in and around the 90-mile-wide Taiwan Strait, prompting its neighbor to boost investment in defense. But the headline is this. Taiwan confirms that United States troops are permanently based now just off the coast of China. We said back in June that our intelligence was telling us that more military assets were moving yeah. than any time yep. in the history of anybody that's alive now, all the way back to probably previous world wars, and they were being moved to that area of the world. Wow. Australia has already begun to prepare for war with China. We are being told that our military people are telling their subordinates that we're going to war with China. And now Taiwan is confirming that U.S. troops are already there. Military vessels and naval vessels are already there off the shore. And Taiwan is increasing their circling of Taiwan. They annex the China Sea on the other side of them. We covered that several yes, months they ago. Did. Yes, and they said did. We, we own it. About that. So now the international date line is on the other side of Taiwan in their mind. And so I'm telling you, when you start thinking about Ukraine, Russia, then you talk about this happened in Moscow, which is now causing for retaliation. And now supposedly Russia is going to use more bombs, more powerful bombs in Ukraine than they ever have. Then you have Israel and Hamas and Rafa, and now you have many of their troops are being moved to the north to get ready to fight Hezbollah. Now you have Syria, who is where ISIS is, and and in Afghanistan, and now they're rising back up. They're coming back from the dead because, guess what? Many of the military things that they're using is the ones that we left them with. The billions and billions of dollars worth of military equipment that we left them to, to use for their terrorist attacks. Then you have what's going on with China. Then you have these nations increasing their military readiness and saying we need to raise our terrorist threats. Mm -hmm. The world is on a turbo speed course, Sandy, to World War III. Very well put, by the way. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. So the thing that I'm thinking while you're laying all of that out for us and explaining all of that is— all of this is happening while we've depleted our stockpiles yeah, right. of ammunition right. and certain pieces of equipment that we can't use to <laughs> help defend our our own self or to send out for our you know our own uh, missions. I mean, I, I know we send all this to Ukraine. We're part of NATO. All of that, but that just doesn't seem to suffice when. We've got troops spread out everywhere, and we need to be protecting the homeland more than ever. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Speaking of protecting the homeland, I don't know if you saw this video, and I don't know if the people saw this video. Oh. This, oh. Ha this happened at our southern border. Are you playing this? I'm playing it. Watch this. This morning, tensions escalating on the Texas border. Dramatic new video shows a struggle between Border Patrol and migrants in El Paso. The video shows dozens of migrants pulling aside a razor wire fence, then pushing their way past a handful of Border Patrol agents. The migrants were eventually stopped a short time later by a steel fence. You mean a wall? <laughs> wow. We were eventually stopped by a wall oh that somebody built. Do you, do you, do you see though those people in military garb are standing there, obviously with orders. Don't do anything. Just stand there and act like you're tough. But if they push you, just let them push you because they could have stopped that, but they can't stop that. They know cameras are on them. One of the military guys there, and I don't know if that was um, border security. I think it was the border security team. Uh, he literally gets knocked down and they trample him mm -hmm. and, and run over him. When you say stop that. You don't mean with physical force. You mean with I was saying, using their weapons because yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. there's there lies the problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they know we'll just rush. There's way more of us than there are of them. We'll just rush right through here, and they're not going to be able to do anything. And we'll just we'll break through. Yep, exactly. Well, so my thought to that was, 
<gasps> if that's the mindset down at the border, what's the mindset once you get loose in the country? <laughs> well, funny that you should say that. Oh boy. Okay. I'm going to stop talking because every time Yeah, yeah you keep I you keep something. introducing. You, I'm not, and I don't even know it. Yeah, you don't I don't even, even realize you it. You didn't even have time to know uh, what I'm covering. I mean, I can see the next story coming up. I mean, I don't know what it's about exactly, but. Illegal immigrant calls on other aliens to invade homes in the United States, taking advantage of squatting laws. An immigrant from Venezuela currently residing in the United States illegally has grown has gone viral recently after he called upon fellow kinspeople and immigrants to raid the U.S. and steal people's homes by leveraging the squatter laws some states have. And here's the video. Some of you surely have seen this. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Over the top crazy. TikToker is, is this TikToker is going viral by telling illegal immigrants to invade homes in America and thanks to progressive squatting laws. One of the things, of course, it's in, it's in his, uh, Spanish, but... He says, we, shall, we can invade a house in the USA. What do you think about this new law? But let's, let's see. It has the, um, the words on it. So let's see what he says. Gente, he pensado invadir una casa en Junei State. Ya que me enteré que existe una ley que dice que si una casa no está habitada, podemos expropiarla. Capichi. Muchachos, aquí en Yunei State también se aplica la de invasión de terreno. Y creo que ese será mi próximo negocio. Inva My next business invading. He goes on to basically says, look, I've, I'm doing it. I'm encouraging you to do it. He goes on to say in this video that he found a code where he could search properties and this code enables him to know empty properties. And so he's sending these properties to people across the border so that when they come illegally across the border, they know where to go to houses that are currently vacant yeah. and they go in. I watched one on New York. I think it was New York or somewhere just this week where the homeowner. Now I was about to bring that up. Was arrested and taken away in cuffs. Oh, no, no, no. I'm thinking of a different story. Yeah. Talk about she, that. She was taken away in cuffs. She found out that somebody had been living in her house and squatting in her house. And the squatting laws of New York say you have to have 30 days if they believe and they say that they're leasing it. That's what they're doing. They're just saying we're leasing it. <laughs> We, although we don't have a lease and the owner is saying we're here legally, we say we're leasing it. So oh, yeah, I'm yeah. leasing. That's what I'm, I'm leasing. Yeah, I'm leasing. I'm leasing. I'm not, I'm not stealing. I I'm leasing. Is this really happening? And they arrested her, Sandy. She was taken out in cuffs. The owner of the house that these people were squatting in. And now you have an illegal alien doing a viral TikTok saying, all my brothers and sisters, get across the border. I'll send you a code. We got a system going on. You can find a vacant house, go in it, sit down, start living there, and mm -hmm. it will take them so long and so much money to get rid of you, you'll end up getting a free house. Oh, and by the way, many, many more cities saying, you don't even have to do that. We'll just give you a house and pay your house payment, give you money as well, I'm telling you, while our veterans and, and people that love this country are homeless, suffering, dying, yeah. uh, ending their life. Some of them and, are living on the streets. They can't not get medical care that they need. Some of them need um, uh, psychological, psychiatric type care. Certainly can't get that. What is the story about the young lady who was m actually murdered? Um, is it that her parents' home was invaded and taken over or there was a squatter and she went to confront them and she was killed. She was killed. Yes. Yes. How, how, how long did Where's you hear about that? Where's the justice for Where's her? Where's the justice? Where's the justice? Where's the compassion for her? This is what this guy goes on to say. Saying, the audacity. This is the brazenness. When you have no fear of punishment, in February, this guy posted a video where he confessed that he did not like to work. He found it easier to rob from the American taxpayer. Look what he says on the video. He gets him allergies. 
I can yeah. Claritin. I, I confess Claritin. that I don't like to work because it gives me allergies. Work. I'm allergic to work. <laughs> work. <laughs> it just makes me sneeze. Your your work. I don't. In the end, neither of us has money. They keep criticizing us because I live off a of tax that you pay monthly. That same day, he mocked the, those immigrating via the proper channels. You came to the United States to work. I came to vacation. Look at the difference. You and I didn't come with the same purpose. You came to the United States to pay taxes that you didn't pay in Venezuela. Mocking the system, saying you did it the right way. You came here to be a legal immigrant and become a legal resident and work. I came here to vacation and steal from the American taxpayer. Yeah. And he's gone viral, and he's a viral celebrity. What did we call that last week? Tourist. Oh, tour, uh, robbery, uh, tourism, uh, tourism, uh, robbery. <laughs> the theft, tourist, tourist, <laughs> th thieves. I can't even keep up with it. People are literally coming to America on a vacation visa to go steal from people and then go back. And and we and we keep saying, well, there's there's no border crisis. There's no border crisis. What are you talking about? It's the safest it's ever been. Mm -hmm. Ten. They admitted this week, said it, 10 million. Yeah, if they're admitting to that many, then you know it's more. 10 million in three years. They admitted to that this week. I would bet anything the number's actually higher. Absolutely. God. I mean, okay. What in the world? We're still in. There it is. There it is. And I forgot I had it. Okay. Keep, keep talking. Keep talking. I want to We're show you still this. in relatively, mostly manageable times. I know we're suffering everything from your rent to your utilities to property taxes. If you own a home to food to fuel have gone up and it is straining us. But it's mostly, mostly manageable. What's going to happen if things get really bad? Yeah, yeah. And we have not only you have your issues to take care of, but we've got maybe 12, maybe maybe even f up to 15 million extra people who weren't here three years ago mm -hmm. that need a place to live. They need food. They need their utilities paid. They need to go to the doctor. They need medicine. Yep. What are they going to do? Yep. They don't. You should know that a lot of them are not working. They don't have jobs now. If the gravy train gets cut off, I don't think we've even seen the beginning no, of no, theft no. and robbing. Yeah. Yeah. You you think you think 2020 and the streets burning was one thing. You you ain't seen chaos if if the switch is turned off on all these millions of people who's been getting a free ride and all of a sudden they can't eat, they can't they don't have a place to live. And, and they feel emboldened that they have a right to anything they want, Yeah, you have no idea what would happen. Well, let's just bring it down to a more digestible, a more real-world scenario. You're a mother, and you've got one, three, maybe five children, and they need to eat. Yeah. Yeah. It might get a little nasty because that kid, that kid's gonna eat eventually. Yeah, that's it, right. I, I don't know what's gonna have to happen, that's but right. that kid's gonna eat. So that's what we're looking at here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's let's go to this real quick, and and this right here is just unreal. This is the video of what we're talking about. This lady, look at this. New York City homeowner gets arrested after changing the locks on her own home after it gotten taken over by squatters. In New York City, anyone can simply claim squatters' rights after 30 days of living in a home, which isn't enough time for them to, to – now, look, let's see. I don't know if there's a language. Who are these people? Relax. No, 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 no. To understand, how, understand this how this day ended, this this day ended. we need the police right away. With multiple 911 calls and arrests, we have to start at the beginning. Tell the hardest question is how do you say your name? We met at the Del Antonio Hotel in Miami Beach. Hotel in Miami Beach. We have to start at the beginning. My Del, the hardest question is how do you say your name? We met at Del Andaloro, outside the home her parents left her in Flushing, Queens. She's in the process of selling it. No, he loved it. But she's been locked out. She claims squatters moved in on February 6th and refused to leave. What's it like being here knowing you can't go inside of your own home? It's enraging. It really is. In New York, squatters have rights after 30 days. By the time that someone does their investigation and they do their work and their job, we'll be well over the 30 days, and this man will have stolen my home. And now she's back. Just after wrapping up our interview, a woman... So several people were living in this house, and... 
when it was all said and done, the cops came in and looked at her and said, I'm sorry, but you're under arrest. She goes, what am I under arrest for? And they said, there are laws in New York that you have to abide by the renters and the lease laws. She goes, this is not a lease. This house is not for rent. (laughs) Apparently, if you stay in it and can get away with it for 30 days and have proof that you've been in it for 30 days. So you just got to get in and lay low. Lay low. Don't. Don't don't open the windows. Don't yeah. turn the lights. Go out the back door. Is this really Sandy, active? this is our this is United States of America. Uh, Thirty days later, you magically now are leasing the home. And all the laws that apply to evicting someone on a lease apply to you now. And you can tell the owner, hey, I don't care. That house, it goes on to say that house is like one point two million dollars. Yeah, my God. She's trying to sell it. One point two million dollars. And she can't get in it to sell it. Unbelievable. This is the world we live in. Yeah. Well, you know what else is about to happen? I'm scared to ask. I won't. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared to tell you. I'm not really scared. I ain't scared. Oh. But look, here's a sign. They're saying this a sign that the the that the economy is really going yeah. down. Is the pawn shop inventories are exploding? And we'll just hit this real quick. But it says. Uh, the economy hammers those at the bottom of the economic food chain. It goes on to say that uh, debt levels have never been higher. Delinquency rates are spiking. And it says, if you want to know what is really going on with the economy, pawn shops are a great place to look. When the economy is doing well, pawn shop inventories tend to go down because people aren't pawning much. But when the economy is not doing well, pawn shop inventories tend to go up because people are pawning lots of stuff yeah. for fast cash. And they're saying that pawn shops have record inventory right now, and that is a sign of where this economy is going. So sure. that's just a, a little nugget there. Yeah. Uh, we can, well, it's just another indicator, right? It's just another indicator. Mm. But let's let's transition to something else. Let's get our let's let's uh, let's talk about um, all the hope and the excitement hope and, and excitement. the good yeah. things. Yeah, the thing that when you really need a, <laughs> and you're having a gloomy day, and you just say, uh, you know what I need? What is it? Would you get from the sun? Vitamin C? Is that right? Uh, uh, vitamin D. B D D B C A D A B C D E F G. It's D, right? Somebody out there help us out. Know. I think it's vitamin D. <laughs> I need a little vitamin D A B C D F G. <laughs> So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go out, and I'm going to enjoy the sun. Mm. And I hope you didn't do it this week. <laughs> because there's a geo. Wait a minute. Let me use my little tool here. Good move, babe. There's a geo magnetic storm. That's what I'm talking about. Storm. Mm-hmm. Say it again. Storm. The sun is exploding. God, you sounded like a half animal. Or <laughs> hey, I did I did that with Tony on the show tomorrow, tomorrow oh, night, and no. he freaked out because it was it sounded like somebody he's looking for. I love. He's that. like, is he a hybrid? Okay. I, I love that thing, and I hate it. I said, love hate relationship. <laughs> I love hate. Some satellite operation may be temporarily <laughs> affected by magnetic storms, which could create aurora displays. They're saying all the way down to Alabama. Okay, stop. I want to know if anyone saw this yeah, aurora yeah. borealis Last night. effect. What is the other word for it? The um, the no, northern lights. Northern lights. Or if anyone, even north of Alabama, right, was outside, or you knew to go look, or yeah. you accidentally saw it, please yes, tell us know. if you saw this. I. I just couldn't now, believe it's this be, is already it's supposed happened. to be last night or and maybe tonight. Really? Because, yeah, it says a powerful geomagnetic storm set to strike on Monday. Can I sit out in my chair? And then I think it meant early Monday today, but I'm not what? sure like last night. Could disrupt communications on Earth and in space and create dazzling light displays in the skies over the U.S. and the U.K. The U.S.-based uh, Space Weather Prediction Center issued a warning that a, quote, active geomagnetic storm was underway after the massive amounts of charged particles suddenly erupted from the sun. Stan Dale has been telling us that was coming and that he's been, he's been following this. And S- but look Lisa's at this saying tonight is the lunar eclipse. Yeah. Yeah. Where have I been? I haven't taken that much medicine. 
It's like I don't know anything that's going on. There's so much happening in the heavenlies. What? What? Look, the March 23rd CME arrived, uh, gives the global time there. And watch this. They're on a scale from one to five, five being meaning apocalypse. This is a four. A four uh, of these particular geomagnetic storms is what we're looking at. And it says it's a severe geomagnetic storm just under the biggest that it can be. But then watch what this article says, that at some point briefly they updated it to a G5, which is the highest there is. As of Monday morning, the Space Weather Center had issued an active warning of a G5 storm. That's a, that's the worst magnetic storm you can have, Goodness. which is the most extreme type of geomagnetic storm. It said people should not be concerned, of course, as the phenomenon would affect satellite and radio operators, as well as cause fluctuation of, of weak power grids. Well, I will uh, ask you to pause there for one moment. Okay. There was a Bitcoin brouhaha today, so oh, okay. was it anything to do with that? I have no idea. Hmm. Anyway, continue. I have no idea. Uh, but it is, it is believed that, and by the way, also this week they said, not this one, but they believe that there's, other geomagnetic storms coming soon, watch this, that may interrupt and disable all internet and communication systems. Possibly during an important election cycle. Is People started commenting when I shared that meme. Let me guess, October of 24? Oh, these people, they're so smart. They're right? so smart. So smart. But that's that, what that's, that's what they're predicting is coming. Wow. So does it go on to say, you know, you need to be careful because this is actual, actually, this is some form of radiation. I don't know how yeah. dangerous it yeah. is, how oh, much, yeah. how much of it you can actually <laughs> consume or be in or whatever. I don't know. I mean, my Lord, I mean, it seems like we're not far from the earth splitting open and people to <laughs> start to fall in. <laughs> I'm only okay because I watched three episodes of The Chosen last night, and it just made me feel good on the inside. Why? How did you watch that without me? I went back and watched ones you've already seen. I just needed some positivity, okay? Is this, conf is this live confession right now to your I husband? I do It can't be. You know, you know what could be the answer? Mm. They need to click down in the description. And get them an EMP shield. I think so. The company that was started by Stan Deo, and we are affiliates with it. There so you go. we have it on our house. Absolutely. On our cars. We have it for our cars. Mm -hmm. The EMP shield, all you have to do is click the link down below. I and let get this prepared. guy know that this house would not be complete until that sure EMP did. shield was installed. Yep. We built our house. We put that EMP shield in there, and that's ready for whatever the sun does to the. Put it this way, it'll give you your best protection you could possibly have. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that it will protect you against everything, but I don't <laughs> think it's, I don't think it's going to protect you against what happens in the book of Revelation. <laughs> when Wormwood... They didn't put that th in the warranty? I don't think EMP Shield protects against Wormwood <laughs> falling out of the heavens and killing a all third the of the seals, people. <laughs> all the apocalyptic events? Okay. Yeah. Maybe not. Um, so... But i tell you something else that will give you joy <laughs> is to go to Faith TV because we're on Faith TV, Sandy. Yes, we are. Look, we're, our TV show is getting ready Woo! to broadcast all over the world on Faith TV. And look at right here. This is so awesome. If you get the Faith TV app, as mm -hmm. soon as we go live on Sunday morning, you can go there and you can watch us live there. If you don't want to go to YouTube, whatever, just go within this app. And we're sorry for that picture. I know it looks like I don't want to be there. <laughs> Wait a We're going to get minute. another picture. Look at you. I'm like, really? She's, like, she's got this look on her face like, what are you really? doing to me? Really? I've got to do <laughs> I look so happy. You're just like, here he, what's he doing to me now? Oh, God. Okay, but anyway, so back, I back actually did want to be there. Yes, you did. And you need to go out there and, and click and watch some. Faithnow.com. Faithnow.com. Mm hmm all right, Sandy, let's get into some uh, some other things. Let me just sort of browse through here right now. Oh, here's, an here's another thing about the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, because 
in just a matter of days, it's the Great American Eclipse. <laughs> yes, it is. I mean, it is April 8th. Oh, and by the way, da -da 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 -da, I need a sound effect that goes like the breaking da -da news. Da -da -da. Breaking news. We will be live April the 8th. That's a Monday. How, how cool is it it fell on a Monday? We'll be doing our show live from Arkansas, somewhere, location undisclosed. We can't, we can't let you know where we're at. We're going to be because we don't want the government to know. But we're going to be somewhere in Arkansas, which is in totality, and we're going to get to see it that day. We're going to film much whatever we can, interview people and that are there on, on site, and then that night we're going to talk about, because the whole world, there's no telling what's going to happen that day because yeah. watch this, Sandy, mm -hmm. because while we're going to be there, look what people are already doing. Uh, bracing for chaos, Texas counties, this is just Texas. This is happening all over the country. Are issuing mm -hmm. emergency declarations yep. Multiple ahead Multiple of solar eclipse. So let's let's just and read this. And this says nothing. I know you're going to get into this article. This says nothing of the concerns they have over uh, airline issues. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and flights and all that. So. Exactly, exactly. Some Texas towns are bracing for chaos ahead of a rare solar eclipse that will cut across the state next month, potentially drawing hundreds of thousands of tourists to the region. And it goes on to say that, you know, these counties are doing these emergency declarations. Now, I'm not going to read the whole article because what he's talking about is they're, they're worried about the crowds. They're worried about the strain that's going to put on local facilities and sure. resources. But do you know what they're saying in these? Make <laughs> sure you have water. Yeah. Food to last you two weeks, right? And batteries in your flashlights in case the power goes out, and fuel that in your car, and yeah, and you you have full tank of gas. That's what they're saying yeah. in these in these people that are, these cities that are in the totality. So my question yeah. is, that doesn't sound like you're just worried about a lot of people, because these proclamations are up to two weeks that they're declaring this. What do you think is that what they're trying to do, Sam? What do you think is happening here? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, there could be one or multiple angles. Maybe they really are concerned these things are going to happen. Maybe they want you to spend a lot of money <laughs> at the grocery store and the, the gas tank. But um, the gas station, it it's hard to know, you know. It's hard to just read a news article or watch the news and be able to trust that they're telling me what I need to know, that they're stating the absolute truth. I mean, is it some kind of code, some kind of <laughs> language to um, try to help you out, you know, try to help you be prepared? Or is it, I don't know. I honestly don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were talking about this earlier. Here's the article. The FAA is also issuing a warning for air travel disruptions during April's total, total solar eclipse. Yeah. It says the celestial event is set to cast a, a path of totality across 13 U.S. states. And according to the aviation agency, is anticipating the impact air travel operations before, during, and after the eclipse. So there's the path. Coming in, Texas, going all across the country. It says that the eclipse effects on U.S. airspace are anticipated between approximately 2.30 p.m. and 3.40 p.m. Eastern Time. At this time, some 32 million people in, the North America, in North America are expected to witness this rare event, which is anticipated to be the most watched solar eclipse in history. A total solar eclipse occurs, blah, blah, blah. And then it says, in a statement, the FAA suggested that aircraft should ready themselves for potential airborne holding, reroutes, and departure clearance times that might be issued for all domestic IFR arrivals and departures during the eclipse. Departing aircraft from airports along the eclipse path are strongly encouraged to coordinate their departure times as early as possible to assist fixed base operators with staging aircraft and alleviating ramp congestion. I'm sorry, that seems to be just <laughs> yeah. code talk for we're anticipating something more than just an eclipse. I mean, are they anticipating disruptions in communication? I mean, are we going to see 
internet, cell phone, I, I don't interruptions. Know. I mean, that's what, it's, that's what it sounds like. I'm getting to the point where I'm almost wanting to go to down detector every day to see what, yeah, yeah. to see what is having problems. Because like, things are being affected because the sun <laughs> is doing the crazy stuff. In, in before yeah. the eclipse, Sandy, think about this. There's a lunar eclipse right now. There is these storms on the on the sun. Yeah. And get this. I want to see if I can find it. Uh here, look at this. In addition to the eclipse, this is not in this article, but there's a comet. It's called a devil comet. That's coming through. Hans Brooks. And and they're saying that some people during the eclipse when it gets dark could possibly see the devil comet with the naked eye. I want to be one of those people. Me too. <laughs> I want the whole shebang. Okay? It's like, I want the deluxe model. Okay? I'm, go <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. The premier version. I'm we going the, several the, states away. We want the pro version. I of the, want of the, the eclipse. premium eclipse package. Okay? If there's more, I want to see it too. What's well, like the, those commercials on TV <laughs> where you, hey, on April 8th, you're going to get an eclipse. Mm. But you know, that's not all. Mm. You're also going to get a comet. But wait, there's, there's more. more because I don't know if you knew this, Sandy. Because of these solar projections, this would be amazing. You may be able to see twisted towers of fire. Bring it! Fire! Come on! Oh, this calls for this. Woo! Fire, fire, fire. Eclipse, fire. You may be able to see twisted towers of fire during the eclipse. What is twisted towers of fire? I don't know, but I want them. <laughs> Amateur and professional astronomers, astronomers alike are rolling with excitement for the total solar eclipse that will fall North America on April 8th. An extra reason to try and catch the rare solar event, according to an excellent new piece in Space.com, because our star is currently near the peak of its 11-year solar cycle, cycle during the totality of the eclipse. The moment when the sun is completely covered, plunging the world into a strange darkness, is likely that you'll be able to see gigantic towers of explosive plasma leaping off the surface of the sun. What? Okay. If we get lucky, a coronal mass ejection will... If we get lucky... I don't know if that's really lucky. If if a massive coronal mass ejection presents itself as a twisted spiral-like structure oh high God. in the atmosphere, do you know, do you know, what in the world? Do you know who you sounded like just then? Who? Oh, my God. What? Who? Who? What was his name? Who? In that movie 2012, the guy in the RV. Oh, yeah. In the, uh, yeah. Yeah. So he's up on the hill and he's broadcasting out of his um, RV. Char is it Charlie? I don't know. And he's standing out there when the earth starts exploding and splitting apart. He's so excited. And he's like, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you were here. You need to be able to oh, see this. Oh, Lord. And, of course, he gets taken out, but. But uh, he went out on his own term. He went out on his own term. But can you imagine if we look up there, when we're there in Arkansas and people all across the country, we look up, and in one day, there's, four, I think it was four and a half minutes of totality, something like Which that. It's going to be insane. That's four, four and a half minutes is a long that's time. That's more than twice the yes. amount yes, from of, the, that I was able to participate yeah. in the last yeah. one. Yeah. And that four was, and a half minutes is that a was long weird times, time. okay? Weird times. I mean, you won't live through that. I mean, I can't believe that you I get to do that. No, you, oh, <laughs> you the won't worst. live to see that. Most people won't be able to experience that more than once. I'm yeah, glad to say no, no, we'll. that, you know, seven yeah. years later, I'm going to be Woody Harrelson. Uh, I don't know his character's name. Yeah. Um, I don't. Most people won't go twice no. to experience no, this. No, no. And the fact that this one is twice as long as the first one. And most one. people that are alive today, regardless of, of your age, will never see another one in America that goes across the country. That goes yeah. across the country. There'll be one that goes across Alaska. There'll be one that goes across mm -hmm. Montana and Wyoming. Yeah. But we, 
our age and even those that are nowhere near as old as us will never see this again. This this is a once in a life opportunity. And and by the way, if you can't go to totality, mm-hmm. you'll get to see partial to, partial. Yes. You need to make sure that you got those special little glasses and all that because yeah. you don't need to miss this. And no. uh, now, of course, if you don't have totality, you can't take those glasses off and look at it. Even even if it's partial, you still need the glasses. But it is going to be incredible. But can you imagine? Can you imagine? It's if nothing else happened but the eclipse, it is mm-hmm. a spiritual experience. Yes. Just so that alone. Dean is saying, you know, once such a big deal, when you're there in a place that has totality yes. and you look around and you know it's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon or whatever yeah. time it was and it should be, you know, total sunshine or yeah. at least totally lit, yeah. but yet everything starts dimming down, the yeah. street lights yeah. pop on. Um, the, the cricket starts chirping. Everything that you, when you go outside in the middle of the night, mm-hmm. it happens instantly. I hate to use the word eerie, but it at but least it is. it is eerie, or it at least Spiritual. started with an eeriness. And you know, once you start looking around and trying to take it all in, you're able to, to and, calm and, and, down. But still, you're there. You know. This is going to be over soon. I need to try to take this all in. I need to yes. try to observe everything and everybody. People start weeping, yes. crying. People falling on their face. Yes, falling to their knees. It's, it's just, just a spiritual thing. But yeah. take all that aside. Yeah. The way it looks, you can't describe it. Mm-hmm. No. You cannot describe it to someone. You can't say there was mm-hmm. light just coming because you've never seen anything like it in your life. You can't compare it to anything. The light that comes around the moon Mm -hmm. is bright white. And it is like, I don't know how to describe it. There's this this, this round black ball up in the sky that you've never seen before. In all your existence of looking up at the sky, you've never seen a giant black ball with this white phosphorus Mm-hmm. burning looking gas around that black ball. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It is. If you can make it to totality, I encourage you to do it. And I know it's, you know, going anywhere can be an ordeal. Especially if you're way out west. That's a long travel. Right. I understand I, that. If you don't want to make some big trip, and we're not making some big trip, it's just for me right now, doing anything is an ordeal. <laughs> um that's not going to be If always. you live, like, say, in Alabama or Tennessee, if you can go to the closest place to you to at least be there for that short amount of time to be in the totality, I think you would really appreciate it. And I, yeah, I yeah. hope you all get to experience it. And like it. in Alabama here, they're going to get 90%. Mm-hmm. About half of Alabama's got 90% totality. And so, so whatever you can get, get the glasses. It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. But understand this. Understand this. What we try to tell you on the big picture here is we're not trying to hyper-spiritualize it, but there are people sitting back and waiting to do things during this, okay? Yes. I hope I'm wrong, but when if you've got millions of people— I think that's definitely a line of thinking. Yeah. I think it's definitely possible, but I hope it nothing happens. I hope nothing happens. But if there was going to be a time— <clears throat> when you, you're, you've got people who are already af- afraid of that we're in uh, end times, and you've got apocalyptic events happening in the in the sky, yeah. and everybody's looking up and they're seeing this thing that they've never seen before, and then and then the crazy possibility of seeing an actual comet during uh, the time of the eclipse as well, and all this other stuff that's going on, and 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 then something horrible happens. I hope I'm one hundred percent wrong. But you know there are people thinking, if we did something right then during that four and a half minutes, it would terrify them on another level. So I pray in the name of Jesus yes. against anything like that happening. But there are people's minds that are working like that that want to take advantage of this. But sure. then, but then say the flip side of it, mm-hmm. take the terrorist thing side yep. aside and think about this. There's no telling what could truly happen cosmically, you know, yeah. with, with our power grid and these kind of things. Right. And I, and I think that's why they're telling people, hey, we're just worried about the crowds. But at the same time, make sure you got two weeks worth of food. Make sure you got two weeks worth of water. Make sure you got batteries in your flashlights. Make you got make sure you got gas in your car. Well, so you've been toying around with the idea of doing an eclipse 
show. Yes. To some degree. I don't know what length or if you'll be able to do anything at all. I hope it comes together. But if you do, this comet, this Pons Brooks, this is a 71-year cycle yeah. comet right. or so. Now, it may go a little longer at times, but um, I believe this was 1811, 18, am I saying that right? 1883. I don't know. I'm terrible with math. <laughs> but this comet. It we, doesn't we come delay. sometimes it doesn't come exactly every 71 years but this eclipse and this comet at the same time okay Sandy why have we never heard of this comet when, when if, if it comes around on a regular cycle like uh, you know, cycle. Haley's comet and all this kind why have no one ever talked about this comet that we knew was coming back around why did they just decide to finally tell us that the devil's comet with horns? Yeah. Is going to be seen during well the great total, total eclipse. I don't know. I really don't it seems know. Suspicious to but me. my whole point of that is the and I've seen some people in chat talking about this. This eighteen eleven um, was it a big earthquake? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And all these things that can happen in some kind of conjunction with this comet. Yeah. So that's yeah. just another layer of, I don't know, it, the fact that there are seven Ninevehs. Who worked that out? And st- How did and, that happen? Hey, and the one that came through seven years ago went across seven Salem's. I mean. Which means peace. Somebody knew something. We know who that somebody is. So. Marks an X. I don't know. X marks the spot. Maybe we should take a vote. I vote yes on the eclipse episode. <laughs> if any of you, um, y'all want me to do what y'all want I, me to do a show on the eclipse, let me know in the comments. I think you should, and I think you should do a deep dive. I think you need to go back in history and see what's happened, not just with the eclipse, but in this comet. Yeah, they're saying it follows the New Madrid fault line as well. Okay. Yeah. The, yep. Well, that's bad news right there. I'll yep. tell you that. Yep, yep, that's right. I've heard that. Madrid, and the Madrid, X is over or Little Madrid. Egypt. What What is the name of that town? That's Little Egypt. Carbondale, uh, Illinois. Carbondale, I believe, Illinois. Believe. Little Egypt. That's where the X is. Mm-hmm. On Egypt, y'all. So I think that what? you should do something and explore the eclipse. Explore this comet. Look into yeah. these seven Ninevehs and little you Egypt see comet, and all of this. If you want to see a, a eclipse show, then just say in the live chat and especially in the comments below because the live chat may go away. Make I'm sure you comment. A couple yeses. Put, you, put your comments down below. Just comment the word, the words eclipse show, eclipse show, eclipse show. Okay. All right. So, Sandy, we got more news to cover than just the eclipse. This was not supposed to be an eclipse show. It turned into an eclipse show. <laughs> Or a conspiracy show. Or a conspiracy show. Or this, a P. Diddy show. <laughs> P. Diddy. That's what did it to us. Is that oh, where the train went off the that's, tracks? Uh, right if you're off saying the bat. that's where it went off the tracks, that's, then the train has been off the tracks the entire show. I think it is. <laughs> and by the way, once again, we're so proud of you. Oh, thank you. You have worked so hard to be here. I'm glad to and, be here, and I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate yeah. all the prayers. I, oh, I can't Sandy, say that enough. You, you don't get to read as many comments as I do. They <laughs> are l- just loading you up over the last week of just saying they're praying for you. I, I mean, people from all over the world have been praying for you. I know they are. All right, so let's so let's much. get back to the news. Uh, I want to just say this right here. Um, do you remember just a few weeks ago we showed you that Visa released their new Palm payment that go along with Amazon? Well, guess what? We said on this show it would be a matter of weeks before you started seeing it snowball, and look what J.P. Morgan did this week. J.P. Morgan officially launched their contactless and facial recognition payment system that they say is going to launch next year. And I'm not going to read the article for time purposes, but it just shows you, if I if I get down here to it, this is a demonstration of it. And uh, we'll just play a little bit of this, and I'll fast forward to you. Let's see. Probably get flagged for this. I'm having the best racing in the world. 
people where they get to go then experience other things around the live event. That's what we want to empower and that's a great opportunity for us to showcase a technology that really helps both the business itself as well as fans and customers who want to have a great consumer experience. After the event and before the event, there is still people who are on the website that whenever people want to make payment, yeah. the payment happens very quickly, seamlessly, in a very secure manner. Those Robots. are the kind of commerce solutions that we've been. This, this was at a Miami race where they, they debuted this. So they got robot bartenders, and they are paying with their palm and their eyes and their One faces thing that our consumers at the bar. Expect is to have a, a seamless commerce experience. JP Morgan Payments has helped us do that at this race, and we look forward to partnering with them in the future on new innovative ways to make this a great experience for our fans. Wow. And you know in the big picture, that is so important, right? Oh, yes. Oh, oh, so. oh thank seamless. you for that super sticker. Thank you. Lila. 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 I said Lila. Yes, probably Lila. Lila, Lila. We know it's Lila. Lila, we appreciate you. That was a blessing. All right, so look, look, that that's happening. But mm -hmm. you know what else is happening? You know what else is happening, Sandy? I, I'm it's, scared to ask once very, again. Hey, this is what's happening. Jimmy! Jimmy! Uncle Jimmy's in the house. Jimmy's in the house. In the house. Supernatural AI update. We got the spooky background. Ooh. Looks like the coronal injection is coming. That's a coronal injection? That's just what. No, it's not. No, it's, I think it's supposed to be. I searched for paranormal background when I found this. Oh, I think that's supposed okay. to be somebody's grandmother coming in and talking to them. Oh, okay. So, but we don't believe in all that. It's just demons. No, no, no. It's demons. But, but look, mm. now you know we talk a lot about old Elon. Yes. And about his, uh, you know, he's 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 the savior of the world one 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 week, and he's the antichrist the next. So I sort of lean towards the latter. I'm sorry, not the former. It's JD. JD's he all, never misses. An J, JD, you should be on Comedy Central. <laughs> JD needs his own YouTube channel where he does nothing but dad jokes and and mm. his and funny things. But but watch this. Elon Musk was so proud. He's so proud of his Neuralink. Look what look what he tweeted out. This this is this is freaky, y'all. He tweeted out this other guy's. He reshared this other guy named Nolan Arbaugh. Who is Nolan Arbaugh? Nolan Arbaugh is was the person that had the Neuralink put in his brain. The first one that we covered here. They didn't know his name at first. But here's what he says. He said, Twitter banned me because they thought I was a bot. X and Elon Musk reinstated me because I am a bot. Elon Musk says the first ever post just by thinking, using the Neuralink telep tel telepathy. How do you say that? Telepathy. Telepathy? How do you say it? <laughs> telepathy. Telepathy. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm reading comments over here. And I'm Quit a little reading the comments. I'm just a little messed up right now. Now watch this. Mm. This is Nolan Arbaugh. He, look here he is. He says I wrote this in his wrote this in his head. We write with our fingers. This is really next level. So all of these things from his sight, he looked at a screen, y'all, and thought the words. And Neuralink typed the words, and he sent out an X tweet on his own right there that was typed in his head without hands touching anything, without telling anybody what to write. So you're just messing me up so bad. He thought this. He thought this. And that's it. He didn't voice say it. He thought it, and it wrote it Okay, I from the Neuralink. Two things to say. What? If that is 100% true, honestly, I would like for someone to prove that to me, that that absolutely happened. Yeah. But if that is 100% true, I am glad for him that he has a mechanism 
to be able to communicate. Yeah, because he is, let's say that, just to make it clear, he is a complete para paraplegic. He, he does, this is an incredible thing for him, if this is true, sure. that he can now communicate and he has no use of his arms in his legs. Go ahead. But the other side of that is this. <laughs> if a machine can know what you're thinking Outside of God, there's not a lot of hope for us mm. here on this planet. Because here's the thing. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> right? Because if we lose our thoughts, if we lose what's our, this is ours. This brain is mine. Well, okay, you're going you one direction. Me. I'm going the other. I My thought is if... You can probe my brain or whatever. If something can let you know what I'm thinking, what I'm planning, how am I to get away if I need to protect myself? Yeah, that's a good point. Very you good know? Point. Yeah, I see where you're going. That's so, good point. Good point. I, I want good things for this person and for all quadriplegic and paraplegics who are looking for a way and an outlet. Yeah. But... If you're talking about full intrusion of my brain, yeah. I'm not okay with that. No, no. I'm not okay with that. No, I'm not okay with that either. <laughs> no. But we, we know where it's going. Come on, we know where it's going. It's going, it, the movies have shown us where it's going. It's going to totally reprogramming our memories, erasing the memories of who we thought we were, making us into something that we're not. And then you got the goggles, and then you're living Ready Player One in these Apple goggles that have just come. It's all rolling out. Mm -hmm. And then you got all the wars that are happening. What would people love to do? They would love to <clears throat> just check out of all these horrible things that are happening in the world. Come get away. Come sail away. What is the movie? Come sail Come away with me. But we're not talking about sailing, are we? No. But you put the goggles on, you put a neural link in your head, mm. and all of a sudden the world can just be falling apart and you're okay. Well, you know, they try That's to, what the purpose is. They tried to tell us back in the 80s. Was it Roddy Piper? They live. He wore the sunglasses. <laughs> oh, yeah, the movie for Roddy Piper. We, yeah. I have not yeah. actually seen that movie. That's cool. But that's going some of you way did. Back. Why didn't y'all figure that out and tell the rest of us way back then? Mm. All right, well, look, this is a supernatural AI mm -hmm. update, but it's also, we talk, also talk about aliens, mm. UFOs. So watch this right here, y'all. This right here is, is pretty amazing. Uh, watch the moment that they say a potential UFO shoots across the surface of the moon as an astronomer cannot explain what he filmed through his telescope. Wow. This incredible moment, which he believes is a UFO was captured shooting across the moon's surface, baffling an astronomer. Dr. Sebastian Voltmer was recording the night sky through a telescope when an object blasted through the image. This is the little object here on the moon. And uh, it says an astrologer captured a UFO on film. Now, let's see if I can make this play here because a lot of times it won't play for me, but I'm going to try to make it play. Watch this. Bells. I wonder how big that scope is. That is a nice telescope. Yes. Watch it at the top in the black there. You see it? He slows it down. He says, that's not the ISS. Yeah, surely the ISS uh, is not moving that fast. So. Wow. So, yeah. So something's going on there. Something's going on. Well, uh, here's a little plug for your, I think your last show with Stan. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. In the uh, UFO video that was shown, if you've not seen. Oh, yeah, that was wild. That episode, you need to go back and check out last yeah. Thursday night's yeah. show with Stan Deo. And, and y'all yeah. know Stan Deo's seen some stuff. <clears throat> yeah. And that man said on my show, and I think my show was the first show that he put it on a show. He put it on his website, but I think my show was the first show that he debuted this video. This video, he said, in all my years— and all the things I've seen, I've never seen anything like this. And it it is like a smoke ring and a light 
and then that light goes right through that smoke ring, and then that smoke ring dissipates as the light disappears. And he believes that it is video of a portal, of an interdimensional being. And here's the wild thing is I started getting comments from some of you on that video saying I've seen the same exact thing happen on my farm uh, multiple times where mm-hmm. where the, the smoke ring appears, they go through the smoke ring. It's really, really wild. Uh, if, you, if you hadn't seen that video, you need to go back and watch that video. Uh, now, we got, we got one more video we're going to show you that it deals with the wonderful world of robots. Uh, that's going to freak you out even more. Oh, yay. But, yeah, so before we do that, make Are you sure wanting you... me to not sleep tonight? Is that what we're trying to do? Pretty much, yeah. You got. Well, I'm, mm. a, I'm taking you home. You're going to have to uh, do your exercises and stretch that knee and get stronger, and you're going to love me for it. So go to LarryRagland.com if you'd like to know more about our ministry. If you're new here, you can get a copy of our book, which is blessing people all around the world. And by the way, if you have read our book, please go to Amazon and give us a review. Nothing helps us more getting us in front of people. Go give us a five-star review if you can. and give us a Take a picture of you holding the book because many of you have been blessed by the book, and we appreciate that. And if you want to partner with us very, very quickly, don't go away. i got one more big thing I want to show you. If you click on Partner with us on our website, you can mail your gift in, which many of you have done. Thank you so much. You can give a one-time gift online, or you can become a partner <clears throat> with us, which means the world to us because we're getting ready, as we said, to go on Faith TV around the world, which is going to cost money, and we're building a studio for our television ministry and taking our big picture YouTube to the next level as well. And our partners are making that possible. Yes, they are. I want to see some of these pictures or videos. Rick Whitaker has, he's seen orange orbs over his farm. We got to see that stuff. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. A lot of these are happening over farms. Okay. Think about it. You know, I know where you're going to go. I know where you're going to go. Why do you do this to me? I know where you're going to go. Go ahead and go there. Go ahead and go there. Go ahead and go there. Do I have permission? You have permission? Go ahead. Go ahead. If if we're just going to get kicked off, we'd already be kicked off. So, all right. So my question about, because I didn't get to talk to Stan Deo, and I I wasn't there for the filming, so I would have brought this up. But um, my question to him and my question to to Rick is this, is there any discussion of cattle mutilation? Mm, yep. I, knew you I mean, you're ta- we're talking yeah. about UFOs. A lot of things are happening on farms with cattle. UFOs and farms. And this yeah. isn't a new thing. Yeah, it's not a new thing. Linda Moulton Howe made her name yeah. on investigating the cattle mutilations going back decades ago. Yep. But um, in these two instances, I would be curious to know if anyone is reporting cattle mutilation. So let us know. Let Just us know in the thought. comment if you've seen things like that, Rick, and also others are, that are farmers and cattle ranchers and so forth. Let us know. Uh, one more thing I want to show you is is that you know we showed you the new robot last week called Signal that was owned by uh, ChatGPT. It was had integrated ChatGPT in it, and it was doing these things where it was putting the dishes in the rack and all that. It was just amazing. And it was all processing, looking at it and doing this. But the company that nobody really talks about a lot, but is the most powerful company in the world, which might actually be Skynet, Hmm. is NVIDIA. NVIDIA is a gaming console. It's a a gaming, it came to be known as a powerful video processor. That was used for gamers. Well, now they are the ones that are making the AI chips that are prominent in everything that's AI. Well, look what they did. They came out with their own robot uh, rollout this week. And they are calling it Project Groot. Groot. Like from the movie? That's what I thought of when I heard it. But it stands for something. Okay. So but it but for something. I think they're playing off of that, okay. too. But I want to just show you a portion of this video of their presentation at their conference of what is quickly about to be in your world with robots being powered by the NVIDIA. Systems for simulation. With these tools, we can train Groot in physically based simulation and transfer zero shot to the real world. The Groot model will enable a robot to learn from a handful of human demonstrations so it can help with everyday tasks. Now, what, what I want you to understand is there's a guy who's got the Apple Vision. He's got his hands, 
and he is programming this robot how to pour this orange juice and squeeze this orange juice. But what this video is going to go on and show you is that they are now smart enough to learn from watching or being mimicking mm -hmm. and then learning by watching and mimicking on their own. So we're already there? We're already there. Watch this. And Look. emulate human movement just by observing us. Look at that. I'm playing the drums. He's playing the drums, em what? emulating. What? Yeah. So they put this robot in the drum set and put him watching another drummer. And in real time, they demonstrated him learning how to play the drums just by mimicking a drummer with no programming. So we're already replacing newscasters and voiceovers and... <laughs> We have, we literally can, and actors, you got deep fake. We mm -hmm. don't need actual actors anymore. Mm -hmm. We're going to make yeah. the movies without actors. Yeah. Now we're going to get down to live performance. Yeah. Not just video, but actual live performance with yep. robots. Yep. That's it. And emulate human movement just by observing us. This is made possible with NVIDIA's technologies that can understand humans from videos, train models in simulation, and ultimately deploy them directly to physical robots. Connecting Groot to a large language model even allows it to generate motions by following natural language instructions. Hi, G01. Can you give me a high five? Sure thing. Let's high five. Can you give us some cool moves? Sure. Check this out. All this incredible intelligence is powered by the new Jetson Thor robotics chips. Designed for Groot, built for the future. With Isaac Lab, Osmo, and Groot, we're providing the building blocks for the next generation of AI-powered robotics. People, people, people. This it's, is hear, a movie. Hear me. But it's real life. What? You need to get saved now, okay? <laughs> There is no hope. It's literally over, okay? Listen to the woman. It's done. Humanity is finished. Yep. Okay? There's a hope for us in this next life, but uh, I don't think we're long for this world. Mm -mm. In the time we have left, you need to be giving it to God. This is insanity. Well, if your preacher's not saying it, where you go to church, then Joe Rogan said it. Joe Rogan, professed lifetime atheist, because of all this kind of stuff, it's caused him to rethink his whole atheistic world. And in a joking, actually mocking way, but yet you could tell there was some truth in his heart. Yeah. He looked at the camera and he said, we need Jesus. And he goes, Jesus, if you, were, if you are coming back, we need you to come back pretty soon. Come back, Jesus, please. And he laughed. But I'm telling you, we need Jesus. I'm telling you what. You better get saved. The woman told you. When these pot smokers start professing Jesus and that we, we need. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. To the world. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I do want to thank, I think it was Rick and the Butterfly Express. You are correct. L.A. Marzulli does have a, uh, a video, a CD or a DVD in his series on cattle mutilation, and I've heard him say multiple yeah, times, yeah. it is the darkest yeah. one in the series yeah. when he talks about the cattle mutilation. Yep. And um, are we at the end? We're at the end. This is it. So before we say goodnight, I do want to say thank you to Teresa Fisher. I've been able to glance a couple of times um, at this story that you are trying to bring to light and someone else talking as well about what happened at J.D. Farage church service. And we're going to get into that. We're going to look into that because I hadn't seen anything about that. Yeah. And I was able to just glance and pick up a little bit of the conversation about that. We're going to find out what that's about. But um, tonight's been a lot. Yeah. I kind of wish I did take my my pain medicine. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been easier to deal with because oh. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep because uh, – if I wasn't sitting here with you going over this, I, I probably wouldn't be able to believe 
If somebody yeah. just came up yeah. and said, hey, you hear yeah. about blah, 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 I'd be like, yep. yeah, right, whatever. But um, so, yeah, so I'm just messed up right now, okay? I just I don't even know what to say. Yeah, and Rick, I see that you was wanting to get a link. Go to my website. <laughs> We've got a brand new part of our website now. It's just simply contact us and click on the contact us and put your email in there, and I'll reach out to you. Okay, so just if you ever want to contact our ministry, go to our website, LarryRagon.com, and click Contact Us, and that we will get that, okay? And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, this will obviously be outdated in just a couple of days, but if you're within 100 miles of, um, where am I preaching in Tennessee? What did I call it? Shelbyville. Shelbyville, Tennessee. I don't know the name of the church. Yeah, Shelbyville, Tennessee. If if you are within 100 miles of that, I'll be there Wednesday night. You go to my Facebook, uh, just go to... Uh, Facebook and search for my name. You'll find me if you don't already follow me there on Facebook. And I've got an advertisement there. I'm going to see if I can uh, say show that. I wouldn't plan on doing this, but I'm going to try to throw this up here because I'd love to see some of our big picture family uh, if you could come out and be a part of it. And, of course, it's making me jump through a thousand hoops <laughs> just to try to get into my <laughs> own. Come on. Come on. All right. So, look, I'll, I'll, I'll link it down below, the church down below in the description. If you'd like to get directions to it and all that, I'll put that down in the description after the show tonight. So if any of the Big Picture family can come out in Tennessee to see us, I'll be there Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. Central Time preaching the gospel. It's going to be awesome. I think so. And thank you to Pastor Caleb McCall there in the Legacy Church, the Legacy Church. God bless y'all. We love you. One more time, babe. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Maybe by next week. You won't be having to go through all you had to go through tonight. It'll be getting better. So I believe God, and I thank you for the prayers, but uh, something really good or really bad is about to happen. Something really good. Something, something really, really good. Really good. It's really good. It's going to happen. It's so. really good. All right. Yes. We love you all. Have a good mm. night. And don't forget about tomorrow night mm-hmm. with uh, Tony Merkel and what are the Nephilim and what awesome. are aliens, 7 p.m. God bless you. We ain't woke, Mm-mm. but we are certainly, certainly up. up.